Live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering the AWS Accenture Executive Summit. Brought to you by Accenture. Welcome back everyone to theCUBE's live coverage of the AWS Executive Summit. I'm Rebecca Knight, your host. We are here at the Venetian in Las Vegas. We have two guests for this segment. We have Mike Moore, Senior Principal, Accenture Research, and Chris Wegman, Managing Director, Accenture AWS Business Group. Thank you both so much for coming on theCUBE and you for returning yes, to theCUBE. Thanks for having me back. It's good to be back. So Mike, I want to start with you and talk about your recent research, uh, which is entitled, Discover Where the Value's Hiding, How to Unlock the Value of Your Innovation Investments. I like it, because it just it makes me think that uh, innovation's just hiding somewhere in the corner, maybe underneath this desk. Um, <laughs> how? So talk a little bit about why companies can't find the innovation and, and, and sort of how they're failing at this. We'll, we'll get to the, the, the rays of hope later, but let's talk a little bit about what the problem is as you see it. Well, it certainly seems to be hiding for a lot of companies. Based on the research that we did, we found that over the course of the past five years, um, large incumbent companies like our own, and then also startups that spent a combined $3.2 trillion on innovation, which is a, obviously a huge sum. But when um, we looked at the rate of return on that investment for incumbent companies, we found it was actually declining by 27% over the course of that five year period. So there's a clear disconnect there in terms of what companies are doing. So why are companies, why are so many companies not good at this? Well, we um, asked 840 executives from around the world exactly that question. Uh, and what we found is that for the vast majority of them who had been increasing their investments in innovation, they weren't seeing a great return. And what we found is that many of them were focused on incremental innovation, just small tweaks and adjustments to their products and services. But that's really not enough to get new customers in this day and age. But there was some reason for optimism. So around about 14% of our respondents said that actually they were translating their investments in innovation into accelerated growth. Uh, they were outperforming their peers in terms of their profitability, in terms of their market cap, cap growth. And they actually expected to continue to do that over the course of the next four to five years. So I want to talk about that 14%, that, that, that rarefied group, but I want to bring you into the conversation, Chris, and just talk a little bit about the relationship between Accenture and AWS and how, how, how you approach innovation yeah. and how you, how you help clients think about their innovation and, and driving ingenuity and creativity in their yeah. businesses. So Accenture and AWS have been partners for over 12 years. Um, even before the first AWS service hit the market, uh, Accenture was starting to use it in our labs at that point and, and looking at how we could leverage S3 to, to really innovate on. And, and we've carried that tradition on for, for a while now. And, a couple years ago, you know, we sat down and really looked at what our enterprise customers were struggling with as they moved to the cloud. Uh, and at that point, innovation wasn't quite the, the topic yet. It was really, how do we use cloud to uh, get better returns on our investment, you know, better TCOs, things like that. And, and now we've seen that turn as AWS has, in, has created more and more capabilities and solutions and offerings. Our customers are really, really want to figure out how they innovate, right? They go and ask AWS, how do you innovate, right? And, and that's their number one, one of their biggest EBCs is how do they innovate? So, you know, we, we looked at it and said, you know, that's great, you know, uh, how do we take that to the next level? How do we fix these failures that are happening? And, and what we've seen, what we've seen is, you know, most customers are in this stop and go innovation traffic, is like I like to call it, right? And there's people that are whizzing by them, the 14% are whizzing by them in the fast lane. So the question is, how do you get them out of that stop and go traffic into that fast lane and take, it, there's no lack of ideas. They have tons of ideas on how they can innovate, how they can use drones, how they can use all this. The ideas are out there, but taking those and turning those into uh, operationalized assets that are continuously working, continuous growing, continuously maturing is where they struggle. And the question, I mean, when, when companies would ask you, how do you innovate? I mean, it mm -hmm. is this question, but as you're implying, it sounds as though it's a very, you have to have some discipline around it. Absolutely. There has to be real processes around the innovation. It's not just throw a bunch of creative people in a room together. No, and it, it, that's, that's great. You can do the creative people, and they come up with the great ideas, and there's no lack of those. But then you've got to operationalize those and go through the discipline to take those, pick which ones are going to drive value, invest in those, operationalize those, and take them from a proof of concept or a, a pilot or, or whatever you want to call it, and actually turn it into something that gets used every day and produced. And, and that's what we've been focusing on with AWS, is how do you get out of that, take uh, what's out of that ideation stage, 
operationalize it using the full set of AWS services, and then how do you continue to run that and improve it going forward? So Mike, the 14%, the what are they doing? What, 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 what makes them different? Well, I think there's lots of things that stand out. Uh, but there were really three things that came out of the research. So firstly, that group of companies is outcome-led. Um, as you were just saying there, they're not just relying on the myth of the genius in the garage tinkering away, but they're putting a real set of processes around the innovation activities that they're pursuing. And then they're linking those activities to clear oper operational and financial metrics. And then secondly, they're disruption-minded. So unlike the other companies that aren't performing well, they're really focused on uh, investing in disruptive technologies that have the potential to create entirely new markets. And then finally, they're change orientated. So they're not just using innovation to develop new products and services, but they're also using it to drive more fundamental change across their organizations. And one of the principal changes that they're making is that they're becoming what we call network powered. So they're not just relying on their own internal innovation, but they're drawing on a wider ecosystem of partners like AWS to if you like, supercharge the, the rate at which they innovate. So those are the characteristics. What are you seeing on the ground? Do you have any, can you give us some specific examples of, of how they're taking those characteristics and what they're actually doing? Yeah, so, um, you know, I think you, you see uh, companies set up and, and grow these innovation pods. Um, so, you know, what we've seen customers doing is expanding those beyond just one pod, right? So, not just focusing on one part of their organization to do this, bringing that into a central location, creating a hub of uh, pods and capabilities using everything, AWS services, using DevOps, doing all the, all the cool stuff that's out there, right? But operationalizing that and getting to that center of excellence where they're actually seeing it end to end and they're not just jumping from one, one problem to the next. Uh, and once that graduates out, they have an organization waiting to take that on and continuing that journey while the next set comes in. So it's this, it's this process, it's this ongoing uh, you know, kind of chain of different, of different problems coming in, being solved and graduating out, out the other end. Is this a technology issue or is it a culture issue? It's a, it's, it, the technology's there. I don't see it as a technology issue. I see it as a cultural issue, a change issue, uh, a um, organizational issue, uh, a resource issue, right? You got to find the, the talent that does that. You got to have the operational discipline to, you know, to, to lead this stuff and, and you have to go through that change. And are we were seeing, I, th I think a lot of our customers struggle with that and they want to they learn how Accenture's done it. They want to learn how AWS is has done it uh, because obviously they've been very successful at it. And, and in terms of the, the cultural, the change management challenges that you're, that you're talking about, those are harder to overcome. I mean, so do you have any best practices from your own uh, experiences yeah. with it? Yeah, so, you know, um, we've obviously, Accenture's been in this game for a long time, whether it's innovation or whether we called it, you know, uh, uh, solution integration, whatever we called it, change was always a big part of that. Um, so, you know, a lot of those same change principles that we've used for, you know, 20, 30 years still apply here. Uh, we see you need very top-down uh, ownership and, and sponsorship. So from the very top-down, whether that's the CEO, the CDO, the CIO, whoever it is, they have to be 100% behind this and have to be the cheerleaders. They have to be the people that are going to go get on stage um, at reInvent or other conferences and be the, this is how we're going. So you need that, that lead. And then you need very strong leadership underneath it that have gone through the journey before. This isn't the first time they've done it. They know where the potholes are in that road. They know how, they know what the signs are when they're going down the wrong way and how to get out of that. So you got to have those two key levels of experience. And to bring the others on Absolutely. board Absolutely, and they have, to be the, they have to be the visionaries, they have to be the people guiding them through that. And um, you know, if you've got those people, if they're very, um, you know, very strong-willed, very, you know, uh, luminaries, those people will follow them, uh, and they'll follow them through that journey. Uh, and you know, then they also have got to go sell that to the rest of the organization, right? Because it's, ch it's a change for the rest of the organization. The business is now much more engaged in that process. They're not just in, you know, sending the requirements over the fence. They're very much engaged, right? They've got to understand and go through that agile transformation and understand when they're getting capabilities, what those capabilities are. So they need to go through that new operational paradigm that we're running in. So finally, we're, we're talking about innovation and then in particular AWS and Accenture, almost as the, the, the use cases here. <laughs> um, how would you describe the innovation engine at, at AWS Accenture in terms of the report that you've just published? Uh, 
it, it's obviously, I mean, AWS is, is the biggest part of Amazon, the, the, I mean, the, the, the high growth engine of Amazon, um, and obviously a huge growth engine for Accenture too. So how, how would you characterize it, Mike? Well, I think if we look at the, the three factors I was talking about before, being outcome-led, being disruption-minded, and being change-orientated, then the relationship between Accenture and AWS really exhibits all of those three things. So in terms of being outcome-led, Accenture has always been an organization that's laser-focused on delivering results, delivering high performance, delivering value for our clients, and so is AWS. And in terms of being disruption-minded, we're innovating on the cloud using AWS to bring you know, genuinely new and groundbreaking products and services to our clients. And one of my favorite ones are, are those that we worked on in, in the UK is our partnership with AWS and Age UK, which is a, a charity that uh, helps the elderly. Uh, and we're developing products and services uh, for the elderly that uh, helps them feel more connected to their family. And that's really opening up a brand new market. And then finally, in, in terms of being change orientated, well, it's a relationship that really uh, personifies being network powered and uh, bringing uh, the power to bear of multiple organizations that we can develop great products and services for, for our clients. Great. Well, Mike, Chris, thank you both so, so much you. for coming on theCUBE. It was a really fun conversation. Thanks for having us. Thanks. I'm Rebecca Knight. We will have more of theCUBE's live coverage of the AWS Executive Summit coming up in just a little bit.